Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today has been on the show before. She is the CEO of Nutramilk, my new favorite toy or machine, and she's going to be demonstrating four incredible easy recipes, including a creamy strawberry hummus and a homemade vegan Nutella. And before I introduce her, I just want to let you know, no, you don't have to buy this machine, but it's a game changer if you are somebody that uses a lot of either plant milks or nut butters, because over time it adds up, it can be expensive, especially if you're buying good quality ones, because the nut milks that are really clean, the ones with just two ingredients, which are the ones I recommend, especially if you have GI issues, they're like $6 a carton. And the really good organic nut butters are like $20 a jar. So over time, it really pays for itself, this machine. But it's more than just a nut, mel nut milk maker or a nut butter maker. I mean, you can use it as your blender, as your food processor. You can use it to make ice creams or nice creams. And so I, I love this machine. And I get a lot of requests for products to be on the show. And you can see that I really don't promote a lot of products or people. But if I really love it, I want everybody to know, especially since it's on sale right now for 21% off. That's a savings of over $100 if you buy the whole pack. And that will go on until midnight Pacific time on January 31st. Now, I know a lot of people bought the machine and uh, Parker, it's called the Nutramilk machine. We're going to show it to you. I've done about 13 videos on YouTube showing how to use it. But some of you had questions and I couldn't answer them on the YouTube comments. So I'm bringing back the CEO of Nutramilk. Please welcome Carolyn Chen. Thank you so much for being here and for creating such a wonderful user-friendly product. Thanks, uh, Chef AJ, for having us back here. And um, yeah, so we're really excited to to be able to um, kind of talk to your viewers again and um, you know answer a bunch of questions um, that we've seen uh, come in and and yeah and just kind of like uh, start off with some some of even just like the fundamentals um, and basics of, of of using the uh, the nutra milk. Nice. So I, 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 where have you been all my life? Because you, you're saying you've been around at least I think three years, was it? Well, yeah, it's been about three years. Yeah. I don't go to coffee shops, so I've never seen it. And honestly, I don't, I'm not even sure how I found out about it, but I'm glad I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you, do you want to answer questions first or you want to do a recipe and answer some questions? Because the only one that came into me was why don't oats have to be soaked when you make oat pecan milk? Because I know you recommend when you make oat milk, whether it's oat groat or rolled oat, that you do soak it. Um, okay, um, I'll answer that question first, and then and then I can go on to kind of uh, demonstrate everything uh, else. So um, for the oat pecan milk, it's because you uh, you would do the oats and the um, pecan together at the same time, and so that is um, why you wouldn't necessarily have to soak the oats. And plus, the oat I think the oat quantity um, used for in the recipe is very um, is is little compared to uh, the overall ratio. Um, but, you know, like uh, other ways of also making pecan oat milk would be making oat milk separately and then making pecan milk separately and then mixing them together um, would be an, another way if you wanted to have like, um, I guess, like a, a cleaner sort of um, finish in terms of the milks too much work. I just put it in together and it always comes out fine. And I put raisins in it too. I made up a cinnamon raisin milk, like a, like a, like tastes like a Cinnabon and I just put it all in. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was great. Um, so what I thought I would do is, um, actually touch upon just sort of, you know, when you first get the machine assembling it, you know, like we know we've got, um, uh, a, a good deal of your of, of your viewers who have already purchased the machine um, and they're using it. We've gotten some great feedback, um, and then you know we we have um, you know we uh, kind of compilate you know compilated a, a list of questions that um, we were seeing kind of was a little may, maybe more like FAQ you know frequently asked um, and thought we would address them. So you know this this um, you know the demo that we're doing today is really um, geared towards. Um, actually both your, your, you know, new, new potential users, as well as um, your current, uh, you know, the current viewers. Okay. Um, so what I thought I would show is uh, first, you know, like when you get the machine, okay, uh, this is what is actually included. All right. So you would get 
this is what we call the Nutramilk processor. Okay, so this is the, the whole processor and it comes with this specific bowl, okay? Uh, and the bowl is, uh, it's got an inner filter and it's the one that makes um, milk. Uh, it, it makes milks and the different like liquids. Um, it can also make butter as well, okay? Um, one of the questions had been, um, you know, what is the difference with, because we also sell a bundle that would include the butter smoothie bowl, okay? And um, so you can see the two bowls, all right? Um, are the, it, it's basically a different attachment. And um, we took out the filter in this uh, particular attachment and it makes it easier for people that just really want to make the butters and, um, you know, like soups and pot, you know, like sauces and dips and spreads and things and not let it flow through the filter because then it makes it a little hard to clean. And it's, um, and, and I'll, I'll show you guys kind of a, a, a an example, okay? So you can see here is that like, um, I what I did was I purposely ran the um, the, the almond butter, okay? Um, to over process it, right? And so when when it's, you know, processed for a long time or, you know, or as, as the oils really start to come out, it flows through the filter. So then now it makes it a little bit, you know, harder to clean. Um, and, and a little harder to take out. So this was why, you know, we, we get a lot of people that just want to make butters or, you know, they want to be able to make smoothies and, and again, you know, dips and, you know, soups and such like that and not have it go through the filter. And this was why we came out with this bowl. So if you, when you see on the, um, uh, for example, on our website, if you're going to purchase if, if you see the, what we call the bundle, the pack, the butter smoothie pack, the natural milk butter smoothie pack, this is what you would get to, together with it, okay? If you just get the natural milk processor, this is what you get. And it's important that people don't buy the other piece if they don't have the main piece. <laughs> right, right, yeah. You don't wanna just buy the bowl and not have the, essentially, you know, the, the, the base uh, to be able to process it. And then we also um, include a, uh, a recipe book that's got over 200 different recipes. Um, they're, uh, they're all uh, plant-based recipes uh, that we had created uh, basically when we first started this. So you, you, you know, we actually don't sell the recipe book separately. It comes with uh, the machine, okay? with the purchase. Yeah. Well, I, the reason I like having both is because it, it's, it's sort of like, like having two canisters to your blender. It's just, it's easier if, if you're somebody that makes a lot of things. And like you say, with the screen, there's some things that you don't really need the screen for. Right. Exactly. Um, so like what I would wanted to just kind of show was, um, okay. So this is the, what we call again, the, the processing bowl. Okay. And then um, you'll see here. So actually, when it comes, it's all it's all assembled together. Okay. So you know, you take it out. Um, the this this uh, spigot spout. Okay. Um, would be normally inside. Okay. So the lid. Right. We've got actually the. Uh, it shows like to lock or unlock. Right. So if you uh, twist it clockwise or counterclockwise, that's what's going to lock it. Um, specifically, if you see that there's actually this magnet right here, okay, um, some of the questions or issues that were kind of troubleshooting issues we get is that uh, people will say, um, you know, we can't seem to uh, close the lid or, 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 you know, it's, 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 it's an not, or it's not coming off and it's because it was twisted wrong, okay, so let's say the proper, proper, proper way if you, you I'm going to try and do this on a diagonal if you can see okay so I go like this you can hear that click right click click okay the magnet when I twist this on will then be essentially parallel to the arm this is what we call the the arm okay of the, um, uh, so, so it, it's gonna be parallel because the magnet helps to activate the motor, all right? That's in um, the top arm. And there's, a, there's this motor that actually is going to spin the, uh, what we call the wiper arms, okay? 
So um, that was just like one of, one of the things again was, was just making sure you understand how to assemble the container. Okay, you just put it on, click, all right, and then just follow the little lock and unlock, and then just make sure that the magnet is par uh, parallel to the top arm. All right. Okay. Uh, one other thing. Okay, so I'm just going to take this apart again, just just so everybody can see it. So we mentioned that there's an inner filter, an inner filter bowl, right? You can see that this is it's got this uh, stainless steel mesh filter. All right. Um, so this is the inner filter, and then this is the outer bowl, right? This is what's going to collect your uh, liquid, um, for example, when you're making your milks, right? So we put in the inner bowl, and then uh, want to make sure you put in your blade, okay? The blade is removable, and then you put in your wiper arms, okay? And then again, the lid. I think a lot of people don't realize until you pointed out that the that both both the bowls are exactly the same size. They both hold eight cups. Right. So one of the things is that if you look at actually the inner bowl here and this the butter smoothie bowl, they're the same uh, circumference. Okay, or the same, uh, they're the same dimensions and same capacity, right? And then, so, but it just looks like it's wider or bigger, this bowl, simply because it has to be able to catch the liquid. Okay, so. You know, one of the questions I get asked a lot, Carolyn, is other countries, what countries do you ship to and can the discount be used if you live in another country? Um, okay, so we are, because this, we have this, uh, this particular unit, um, we are selling the 110 volt, um, so the electricity is obviously different. We do have uh, distribution in other countries, for example, all over the uh, UK, Europe, uh, in uh, most of Asia, uh, Australia, et cetera, but uh, you know, we are not necessarily running the special with all of our distributors or our distribution um, so that the discount code doesn't apply uh, on other websites. It only applies on the nutrimilk.com, which is for the US, Canada, and Mexico. Um, and then, um, you know, so if you are uh, looking to purchase in other countries, um, uh, and you're not seeing it on our, you know, if you're not seeing it on our site as to uh, where you can purchase, drop us a line. Um, you know, we're happy to let you know who you can purchase from. And, um, and then, and then we could go from there, you know, because this way we make sure we get you the proper um, electricity. Uh, you definitely do not want to purchase a 110 and try using uh, a, a converter, um, you know, because like it will blow out the, the motor. Some people think that, oh, you know, we, we could just use the converter and it'll be fine. Um, but because when the machines were designed, they were designed, um, you know, according to, they have like, you know, there's different wattage and different um, uh, technicalities, you know, for the, the motors to run on the different electricity and voltage. Um, so you don't want to, um, you know, swap and use a converter. Okay. Luann says, I love mine. Thank you, Chef AJ, for introducing this to me. It's my pleasure. So far, it seems like almost everybody that has gotten one is really happy with it. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, and then one um, little kind of thing that we wanted to make sure everybody knew was that on the um, spigot, okay, uh, this part actually twists off. Um, and so, you know, because you, you definitely want to twist this off, okay, you can see um, it, you know, it's, so it makes it easier to clean. Um, and then, you know, you could just run some water in it and then, you know, use the little cleaning brush to, to clean it. Otherwise you start to kind of get this gunk in it. Okay. And this was, this was a specific, um, uh, NSF, uh, requirement for food safety. Uh, so this is why we do that. Okay. Um, and then, um, you know, again, there's, we, we do have a lot of safety um, mechanisms, me mechanisms in place. And that would, would be why, like, if something is not 
clicked in right, or you know, your arm is not down or something, okay? It's going to give, it's going to flash an error message, all right? An ER message, all right? Don't be alarmed, okay? There, um, most likely there is no defect with the machine. It is just trying to warn you that something is not in place. Um, you know, kind of like when your door is not closed on your, um, you know, your, your, uh, your washer, right? Um, your laundry machine. Um, so it'll flash something at you and say, okay, you know, you need, you need to close the door. Otherwise it's not going to turn on and start the water. Okay. So, so these are the safety mechanisms. Okay. Um, so those are, that's kind of like more the assembly um, part of it and just making sure um, there, there's sometimes when, uh, you know, like if you're, if you put in kind of like really hard ingredients or, you know, it's been spinning a long time there, uh, occasionally the top part of this arm, I don't know if you can see how, where, so it's where it's, where it's actually turning the, um, the wiper arms, okay. Uh, occasionally, it will start to kind of come loose. It's just like a screw. Then you just you just twist it back in, okay. Um, so if you kind of see like here, as I'm kind of twisting it, you just you just then twist it back in, and then um, and then make sure it clicks with it. Uh, one other thing would be is that if you feel like it's not clicking a down, like sticking to the arm. Um, then just, just use your hand, twist the, the, the little wiper arm you see in here, and then and then it'll close, okay? And what couple of the things I learned from you that I think is important for people just starting out is to know that it has to be dry, at least for certain recipes. Yes, um, so because what you know, the machine is doing now, now, yeah, I mean, obviously if you're making things like soups or smoothies and, and anything with liquid already in it, um, it doesn't need to be dry. But if you are making, uh, let's say, nut butters or seed butters, uh, nut milks, et cetera, okay, our process is uh, very different from, um, you know, maybe something you have seen, um, you know, in the past where you, you know, you would have to soak um, the nuts or the seeds, and then you would, you know, add water and then basically, you know, blend it at this really high speed. It's like, and that's where it's just basically pulverizing the ingredients. Okay. And then you have to then uh, take that out and then put it through a cheesecloth and then, you know, squeeze, 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 get the liquid out. Right. So um, our machine was actually uh, designed as, you know, if, if you've ever seen a mill, a mill, right. And it's like slowly grinding, um, you know, nuts and seeds and, 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 and starting to kind of, you know, get the oils out and it's grinding it down to a cellular level. That's what it's doing. So if you, if you do want to soak your, um, you know, soak your ingredient, like soak the nuts and, 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 um, you know, the seeds, et cetera, uh, then, you know, you're welcome to, but they do need to uh, be dehydrated and dry. Otherwise, uh, you know, if there's moisture in the container, it will not be able to grind it down to that cellular level. And then what will happen is you will have pulp left over um, because, um, you know, it didn't have that chance to really grind down to a butter consistency. Right. And the other thing I learned is the reason sometimes it comes out less creamy is not because of the machine, but there's really no shelf life necessarily listed on nuts that you buy. Right. Um, so, you know, let's say, um, you know, again, uh, I mean, nuts, seeds, I mean, these are all, you know, I mean, these are all food ingredients, right? And, um, you know, they, we don't know how long they've been sh sitting on the shelf, you know, when they were harvested, um, you know, we hope they're, they're fresh, right? Um, you know, both uh, myself, you know, I'm, I'm located in California, Chef AJ is in California, um, you know, we, we, we do have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the nuts and seeds that are available that are harvested here, um, in California. So they tend to be really fresh, right? Um, so if I'm, you know, if I'm using, uh, you know, almonds, et cetera, you know, I, I can usually have them processed in about six or seven minutes uh, to make butters and, and to make the milks. Okay. Um, and that's one of the hardest uh, uh, nuts that we have to, to make uh, butter. But what I notice is that like, let's say if I go to uh, Miami or, you know, people that are in Miami, it takes uh, more than double the time simply because there is moisture in the air, in the environment. Okay. Um, the climate um, can, can make a difference. Uh, the storage of how, you know, how you store your nuts, 
um, and, and, and you know, they need to be in airtight, airtight containers. Uh, you should keep, keep them refrigerated and also in like, you know, cool places um, or, you know, they can go rancid. OK, um, we you know, we had somebody who said that, oh, you know, you told us the, the shelf life is supposed to be five to six days or six to seven days uh, in the refrigerator. But, you know, our, our, the, the milk uh, uh, tasted a little rancid after, you know, two or three days. Um, well, I you know, again, we don't know where the the the, you know, the the nuts um, were, you know, were purchased from um, and how long they've been there. You know, it's you know, it's possible that. Uh, you know, I mean, who, who knows, right, where, uh, you know, the, again, the, the freshness and the quality of the nuts. I mean, we, we hope that what we're buying at, you know, Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and Sprouts and Mother's Market or online is, is what we're getting, you know, the get, getting the best of. Um, but, you know, occasionally there might be, you know, a bad apple in there, right? Um, so, so, you know, just, 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 you know, we give these kind of as guidelines and reference. Um, but, you know, like we, we ask you to maybe not hold us to, um, you know, to those exact day, you know, days because like, you know, and, and we can help give some references and, and um, you know, places to maybe buy, um, you know, nuts that we've seen that are, are, are you know, the freshest, okay? Um, and so altitude um, is another thing that can also um, affect, uh, you know, processing times uh, as well, okay? Um, is because, you know, again, um, you know, the higher the altitude, the elevation, um, you know, it, it actually dries out your ingredients. And so it can actually, um, so, you know, the the processing time uh, is, is often, you know, much less. And, you know, again, I say that, you know, but if you're at sea level and then you have humidity um, somewhere like, let's say in Florida and Miami, uh, et cetera, the, the times is, is the processing time will take longer. So, um, so just keep in mind that environment storage, uh, the quality of the, you know, the freshness and quality of your ingredients will make a difference um, in, in times, um, you know, processing time as well. You know, and I wonder if people's refrigerators make a difference because I didn't mean to mislead people, but my milk lasts for eight days. I mean, the only reason I don't know if it lasts nine is I've drink I've drunk it, so it it was fine at day eight. And also, it doesn't mine doesn't seem to separate in the fridge. Yeah, and you know, and and I think it just it really again, I mean, it, it just kind of made it could have been the density of it, um, and like the refrigerator temperatures um, can make a difference as well, um, and you know. Uh, uh, we have to, what we have to keep in mind again is that, you know, most of like, if you're purchasing, um, you know, plant-based milks, um, let's say oat milk or, you know, almond milk um, in the store, right? Um, most of those have a lot of fillers, okay? They've got emulsifiers, they've got the, you know, binding agents, um, you know, and so, so you know, what we're trying to encourage is clean ingredients, right? Um, so if you're doing like an oat milk, it should just be oats and water, Right. It should it shouldn't be, you know, 16 other ingredients, including rapeseed oil and canola oil and guar gum and all these other fillers and stuff and other emulsifiers. Right. You want as fresh and clean as you know, this is why you're wanting to, you know, I mean, you're you're on a journey right to to do the best you can for your body and you don't want to put all this stuff in it. Right. Um, so, so, you know, some people have asked us about, you know, sunflower less, lecithin, which is, which is a binding agent or emulsifier. It is natural, but, um, you know, we, we try and encourage you to not use emulsifiers. It's, it's going to separate maybe in the fridge to shake it, you know, and then, and, and then it'll, it'll mix back up. Right. And what people don't realize, unless they watch the GI Health Summit, what brought me to even wanting this machine is that I didn't realize that these things were so detrimental to our microbiome, our GI tract, things that were, you know, they, they seem harmless, but they're, I found out from Dr. Janice Laster is they're called generally regarded as safe, but they, they weren't really, really tested on humans. And having had GI issues, I just didn't think it was worth it. And plus in the long run, it is cheaper and it tastes better to make your own. Right. Yes. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do then is go ahead and just kind of start. Um, I'll do some um, some demos. Okay, um, I'm going to start with a uh, a simple almond milk, and um, what we will uh, do is um, instead of using regular filtered water, I'm going to sub it with some coconut water. 
And then, uh, you know, because coconut water has a lot of potassium uh, and ele electrolytes, um, and, you know, it's, again, um, some people may not like the taste of coconut, um, you know, water and stuff, but, you know, we're trying to also show you that, you know, you can use other uh, liquids as well, um, not just water when you're making your plant-based, um, you know, milks, okay? Um, all right, so, and what I'm going to show you is, um, we recommend uh, when you're, if you're using nuts or seeds, et cetera, um, to, to use uh, one cup uh, minimum, okay, of, okay, so I'm gonna use a cup uh, minimum, at least of almonds. And the reason for that is because it is grinding it down to its uh, cellular level. Um, and so it's going to start to, um, it's going to start to kind of come under the blades, okay? And so if you don't have enough ingredients in there, basically the, as it's spinning, it's just spinning air, right? So, so it's, it's one cup minimum and five cup maximum, five cup maximum, depending on, depending on the ingredient. Okay. Depending on the nuts or seeds or, or the ingredient, because, um, some of it can be, uh, overwhelming, uh, for, for, you know, the volume um, for the, for the, uh, container. Okay. Just making sure I had my blade in there and such. Okay. Some people have asked, um, is it supposed to make that noise? And we're like, okay, well, we're not sure what noise, but yes, there will be some noise. Um, it is not going to be uh, the kind of noises that you hear from uh, a high-speed high blender, okay, um, where it's just like rrr, 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 that kind of you know like sound. Um, this is what what it's going to do is like when it first hits the nuts, it'll be a little you know kind of that popping sound, and then it'll start to kind of quiet down, okay. So um, you'll see on the machine, there's actually, um, you know, three buttons here, what we call butter, mix, dispense, all right? So um, essentially why we did it this way was it's kind of like step one, two, and three, okay? But um, essentially, you know, there's, because there's no different pulse, um, uh, you know, frequency, or there's no different, you know, we don't have different speeds um, per se on the machine. So it's actually, it's, it's just that it's timed, you know, it has default times that are different, but it's reminding you that, okay, you know, when you're making the milk, if you're going to do, you're going to butter first, and then you're going to mix, and then you're going to dispense. Okay. Um, so in this case, the default time is 16 minutes. All right. Um, why I wanted to, uh, again, address about the, the timing is that, um, you know, we have in our recipe books and in, in our recipe, we have the guidelines, all right, as to what the, the time should be. But, you know, when you're first kind of making it, you, you'll want to, you know, look at it too, you know, to make sure that it has buttered down um, and not, you know, just like a big energy ball that's just sitting there because then, you know, that may not, it's not going to process completely. And that's how you could get pulp left over. Um, again, if you remember, I showed that um, the container where the, the where the where the butter was already coming out of the filter. This was a slightly over processed. Okay, this was actually at 16 minutes already, and it was coming out of the filter. Right. Um, so real realistically, I should be able to have uh, my almond butter, um, you know, in about six or seven minutes. And people, when you ask that, when, or when I say that butter, you know, butter, um, again, remember your first process before making milk is that it will become a butter. Okay. Right. So is this going to run for 16 minutes? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, we don't need to watch this for 16 minutes, all right? But what I, I do want to show you is you see that uh, there are these spinning wiper arms, okay? So what it's doing is it's constantly pushing down the ingredients, okay? So as... Um, as the blades and it's, you know, it's going down, it's grinding it down to the cellular level, that wiper arms are pushing the ingredients down for you. If you are using um, like a blender or a, a regular food processor that doesn't, you know, doesn't have these arms, what you would have to do is constantly open it, push down the ingredient, you know, and then start it again, push it down again, and then, you know, that's what's, um, you know, becomes very laborious. With this, you basically, Press the button, you can walk away, go do your laundry. It's a 
shower, come back, and it'll be ready. Okay. Um, so I think you can obviously you can hear me as I'm talking right now. Um, this is basically the noise that you hear from the machine. Um, I don't think that it is so loud that you would have, uh, you know, a white open upstairs that you get mad because you turned on your blender uh, or you know, you turn on the metronome. It's going to be, you know, quiet. Like if you're making, you know, something a smoothie or if you're making, you know, is that in that first 10 seconds, we kind of had that almond flour, okay, sort of that flour um, consistency, right? And now it is in an energy ball kind of consistency, okay? So you'll see it, it's kind of this like big energy ball. It's moving around, right? And then basically it's going to do this slap, right? So Actually, it, we're, it's getting hard to hear you, Carolyn, because sometimes Zoom has a feature where it, it quiets the sound of machines. Okay. So, um, all right. So, uh, well, anyways, I've, I've gone ahead and turned that off now. And I'll just go ahead and show you where we're at already. Okay, so um, if you could see that it's already this sort of like waviness, okay, it's got its wave. Um, I mean, there, there's this wave and it's a little, it's still a little chunky, okay, there's um, still some parts to it. And again, um, it's subjective in terms of how, um, you know, if you're just making nut butters, right, um, you know, some people like it chunkier, some people like it really smooth and creamy. Um, this was a almond butter that I had uh, made just slightly earlier, okay? Um, you can see the consistency, all right? This is gonna be chunkier. If you like it chunkier, you stop earlier. If you want it to become uh, very smooth and creamy, run it a little bit longer, okay? Um, there's nothing wrong with uh, running it longer um, or, or the machine, um, you know, if you get uh, gritty or, or chunky, you know, it's just, again, you have to allow the ingredients to be able to uh, grind down to that cellular level, release its oils, and then um, and then and and then become you know, and then it becomes this uh, very like smooth and creamy uh, butter. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do? I just want to tell you, Karen says I noticed that my peanut butter doesn't separate when I use the nutra milk. I love that. And Tammy wants to know: Can this be used as a juicer? I know you've told me you've made ginger shots in it. Yes. Um, I've had people that um, made uh, celery juice with it. Uh, I personally did apple uh, juice with it. And then uh, I made ginger shots with it. Uh, you have to be careful with the ginger though, because it will stain the inside of the inner bowl. It makes it sort of this like, it, it, it stains it a little bit yellowish. Uh, just like if you were to add, if you use turmeric, it would make it sort of that orangey uh, color. So it does stain a little bit. So you'll want to be careful with that. Um, and so, so yeah, and oh, you know, one of the, one of the other, um, things that people have loved about using the machine is, um, making veggie broth. So it's the same, it's the same concept as, you know, when you're adding, you know, you can add scraps, you can add, um, you know, um, uh, fresh vegetables, uh, different, you know, into it like onions and celery and carrots, um, and stuff and, and you know, Put it put it all in and then it'll give you um, a really nice uh, veggie broth okay um and so yes you can use it still as a juicer you could use that as, as a processor as well okay um so again i'm gonna show you this was um one that i had previously done a little earlier uh that just to you know this was Pretty much at that finished stage okay so you can see again like you know do you see, if you see the waves around the butter okay that sort of wave right it's not like a big clump there's not you know a bunch of um sort of like again like clumps or, or grinds here um so that so that this is going to allow you to have a smoother milk when you add the water okay 
So I am going to, what I, what I am doing is using uh, an organic coconut water, okay. And this is just because, uh, I mean, I love coconut water. So this is just using a, a different one. Um, sometimes I'll use harmless harvest coconut water. This is about a liter um, or a quart. Um, so, you know, typically we say one quart of water uh, with, with one cup of nuts, um, two cups would be two quarts of water. And depending on the ratios or, you know, how thick or thin you want to, you either add more water or less water. Okay. So we're going to be making milk. All right. Uh, again, one of the questions is, do I get butter? after I make the milk. No, it's the other way around. You first are making butter, okay? At this stage, if I wanted to scoop some out and have some nut butter, I can do that. You know, scoop some out, put it into a, a, a container and then add water and to make the milk, right? So I'm gonna press mix. You can either do, uh, so the default is one minute. I'm gonna add, uh, make it two minutes just to make sure and then press start. And so the, the uh, this one, because this was the almond butter I made a little earlier. So now it's, uh, it's basically, it's mixing and emulsifying together. Coming through, if you can, if you see right here, is coming through the filters. Okay. I'll have to say sometimes, um, you know, if, if there's if when the when the butter is not like, you know, sometimes it, it will kind of get not stuck on the filter. But because this one I had it made for a while, it's a little uh, stuck. But then you know when you first make it, this water just comes right out. we were going to have to sit there and wait for several minutes as I was making the, the butter. So this is going to be a very good example of if you're finding that it's taking a little bit longer for the milk to come through because the butter is on the screen, just do that and kind of scrape it. And the reason why I like to um, press, uh, you know, use the dispense function and then start is because it's using the centrifugal force to push the liquid out. Okay, so you see, as soon as I, I, I kind of scrape the side filters, it, uh, it it's now the the milk is coming out a lot uh, a lot faster, more quicker. Um, and then I'll go ahead and dispense. So. If, if say right now I had that off, yes, the spigot will still work, but it definitely helps when you've got it mixing and it's, you know, again, using the centrifugal force to kind of push it, okay? This one is not meant for a liter. Should be proper size. Oh, I think we have somebody in the warehouse. 
And, and once you're done, just talk about what's supposed to be left, because I think I might have misled people saying that there was zero waste. It's, it's just compared to other methods that when you put it through a nut milk bag or blender, it's so much less. And what you explain is it's not that it's, it, it's pulp, it's, it's the skin of the almond. Right. Sorry, let me, let me turn the machine off so you guys can hear me. I know that the uh, video is hard to hear. Okay. I'm going to show you guys. If you look, I didn't, I didn't take all the liquid out, but if you look at the inside, all you see is the skin from the almonds, okay? Um, there is no actual, like the meat from the almonds um, that's still left in here, which is, you know, where your nutrition is, right? When, when you're, when you're using a cheesecloth, you know, putting it into a blender uh, and making it uh, that way, you know, you're basically putting all of that, you know, pulverized um, almond into a cheesecloth and you're not getting any of that you know, I mean, you know, you get very, very little actual nut nutrition, but because in this case, what we've done is grinded it down to its cellular level, it's, it became, a, a, you know, an almond butter essentially. And then when it mixed and emulsified with the water, it, that's how you get your milk. So in this case, you're having a much more nutrient dense, uh, you know, almond milk. All right. Uh, one of the things that Chef AJ and I talked about is like, okay, you know, when you typically buy an almond milk, let's say again, in, in, in the store, it says uh, one cup, you know, eight ounces equals uh, 30 calories. All right. Um, that's not going to be the case here because you're getting about 23 almonds worth of nutrition in a cup uh, when you're making it. So what you would do is, you know, if you only want 30 calories of almond milk, all right, then you would just break down the ratio. So in this case, because I'll use it for smoothies, right? Um, and if I only want 30 calories, because you know, I've, I, I have an entire recipe of how many calories I want for my, my, you know, for my smoothie, then um, what I'll do is I'll just uh, add, you know, I'll, I'll use about one eighth, uh, an eighth of a cup, or, you know, up to, um, you know, maybe a quarter of a cup, add some water, and then put that into it, because that's, that's basically what it is, so that you're, you don't, you know, you're not drinking, um, or potentially adding too many calories of, um, you know, the milk. So, and, and that goes with like, you know, when you have almond butters or any of the nut butters and such, you do not want to be, you know, spreading that all over fruits and eating them by the spoonfuls. Okay. Because, um, you know, real, real, really, you should only be having, you know, one to two tablespoons max per day. Um, and that just, again, depending on the type of, um, uh, you know, depending on what you're following in terms of your, your, uh, and, and you can dilute the caloric density by adding things like a grain, like oat to your nut milk. Right. Exactly. So uh, vegan piece says when making oat milk and the nutra milk, can it be made thicker to use as a creamer for coffee? You, you can. Okay. Um, by uh, simply just upping your, uh, the amount of oats that you, um, are using. Okay. For example, um, two, you, you know, we usually say one cup to one quart, right? So what you could do then is say two cups, uh, to one quart of water. So, you know, you, you, you would just change your ratio. Now, one thing that I will want to say though, is remember that the, you know, if you're used to oat milk that you've, uh, maybe purchased in the store, um, that has like the canola oils and the rapeseed oils and such. And you're, you know, cause one of the questions we get is that uh, it doesn't froth. Okay. Well, yes, because, you know, if you think about it, oats don't really have oils in them. They don't really nat naturally have oils as opposed to if you were making a cashew creamer or an almond milk or an almond creamer, right? If you're using oats only um, and it didn't have added, you know, it wasn't fortified or it didn't have, you know, added oils, um, you're not going to really be able to froth that, um, the froth, the oat milk. Okay. So if you're expecting to have like, you know, fun latte art <laughs> or, you know, like froth, um, oat milk, um, that will be a little harder when, you know, with, with the oat milk that you're making. Um, so we do want to be clear with that. Um, but it is a lot cleaner, you know, you can add dates, um, to, you know, you can add a little dates to sweeten, um, 
you know, uh, one of the things that uh, we have recommended, if you do want a little bit of the, um, you know, the fats to add to your oat milk to make, uh, to make it a little creamier um, or to be able to froth it is to add just like a little bit of cashew. Um, some people are, uh, of, of course, allergic to cashew or, you know, they don't want to add nuts to it, then, you know, we're, we're just, you know, saying that, okay, if you add uh, a different type of maybe nut or seed to add a little bit of the fat, that'll help with the frothing uh, for your coffee. Right. And can you talk about when is the best time to add things like, let's say you're making a plant milk and you want a little cinnamon or a little vanilla or a date, what is the steps? Exactly. So um, uh, actually I was going to do a walnut milk. Okay. And then add the dates uh, to it. So what you want to do is you want to add that after you have completed the butter process, um, because what you, you, you know, when you're making the, um, Again, like with any of the nuts or the seeds, you want to be able to allow it to uh, break down to its cellular level. If you added all of the ingredients to it at the beginning, it's going to uh, essentially interrupt the process. Okay, um, and so it doesn't give the nuts a chance to, uh, you know, really be able to uh, really, you know, release its own oils and grind down to that cellular level. I keep saying that because you have to be able to allow. The, 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 you know, the ingredients, the nuts or the seeds to be able to, to, to get, you know, release the oils, get, get down and before uh, interrupting it with other, you know, ingredients. So finish the, um, you know, so finish it. Okay. Like let's say with the walnuts or almonds, let it butter. And then you can um, then add cinnamon, add dates, add um, vanilla extract, et cetera, like that to then make your, um, you know, uh, then, mi then mix it again um, and then add water. Great, thanks. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is, actually I will go ahead and... A question from Jean. I get a lot of foam when making almond milk. Is that normal? Yes, because uh, remember the, um, the, that's actually the fats, okay? Uh, from your, from the nuts. Um, and so, you know, when you're making almond milk, especially at that kind of, you know, um, the, at that level, there's, there's going to be, um, you know, as, as the wiper arms are like spinning it, uh, you know, and it's, it is, it's having that centrifugal force is going to create the bubbles. And so then the fats start to, uh, you know, rise up. Right. And so, yes, you will get foam. Um, and so, you know, if you, if you don't want to have so much foam, um, maybe let, you know, reduce the amount of time, uh, that you're, uh, mixing it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do, so, you know, chef AJ said that one of her favorite plant-based milks is walnut milk. All right. Uh, walnuts are very high in, uh, omega fat, uh, omega acids, which are, you know, good for your brain, good for, uh, good for your heart. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So again, here is that we're doing a walnut date milk. All right, um, the dates are going to help sweeten it, but I'm not going to add the dates at the beginning. I'm going to add that um, after I have uh, been able to process this to, you know, down to essentially a walnut butter. Okay, so uh, the walnuts will process very quickly. Um, I'm just going to let. It doesn't sound very noisy to me. walnuts are already have already started to accumulate uh, on the side and starting to butter okay so I don't know chef Adrian when you're when you're making your walnut milk how fast um, you know does does the walnuts process like one minute that's what I love about it because you know almonds <laughs> Let's face it, you know, there's a lot of controversy with almonds and how much water, whatever. And like, I like, I like what you said that if it's the healthiest nut for us to be eating, 
because yeah. it's highest in omega-3. It's the healthiest nuts for us to be drinking. And I'm not a really big fan of walnut, but man, the milk was delicious. Yeah. And it takes about, from in my machine, it's never taken even two minutes. It's like one minute to butter and one minute to mix. And by the way, Sharon McRae, who is a proud Nutra Milk owner and fan, asked how many cups of walnuts did you use? Uh, in this case, it was about um, it was about one and a half cups of uh, walnuts that I had used here, um, and it was um, I just used like uh, I I like to use organic uh, walnuts, and then you know they could be already in halves um, and pieces, you know, because they're going to get chopped up anyways. Um, so it, you know you don't have to have the most beautiful you know um, whole uh, walnuts if if you know if you don't want. I mean, obviously they're halves because of the you know when you take it. Out. Let me ask you a question. So if I want to dilute the cake, because I, I don't know, you know, about the books I've written, but my, my whole thing is calorie density. Right. And so if I wanted to dilute the calorie density of my walnut milk, would it be better to just do one cup of nuts with four cups of water or to do two cups of nuts with eight cups of water? Because do you know what I'm saying is to make it a little bit less rich? You want to actually do one cup of walnuts and then add eight cups of water. So now you've, um, you know, yes, you've increased the water uh, content, but that will reduce your caloric content. Right. And eight cups is the limit for the liquid, right? Right. That's about two quarts or two liters. Yeah. Guys, what I really love about the machine are those wiper blades because I started using it instead of my Cuisinart because like Carolyn said, with when you process things in a food processor, even sometimes in a high bar blender, you got to keep stopping it scraping down. So when I make hummus, for example, like Sharon McRae's pizza hummus, you just throw everything in and push the button. And, and Carolyn was right, you can walk away. I mean, well, not if it's a minute, but like when I've done almond butter, it's 13 minutes. So I just, I don't know, I just do something else and then come back and it's done. I, you don't have to scrape it down. It's like so perfect for lazy people like me. Oh, Sharon says, how can you make an oat milk if you have to soak the oats first? I would love to add a half a cup of oats and a half a cup of walnuts but I don't think that would work well. You would like to make, okay, so. Uh, An oat nut milk is what she's saying. That was the first question we started with from Linda right, about. Right, right, we were talking about that. In that case, it was the oat pecan milk, right? Um, so if it was half a cup of oats and then half a cup of uh, pecans, no, sorry, walnuts, right? Um, I'm going to say that I haven't actually tried that particular combination. Um, you know, if you, you could do it that way too, um, the only thing would be actually with walnuts, it would work to use the oats. Um, it would have a little bit more difficult time with like, let's say the almonds or hazelnuts and so, et cetera, because it's going to bind with the with with the almonds as it's taking that time to be able to grind. But you know, like with the, what I would say, you know, you would want to do is uh, maybe start with the nuts first, and then add in the oats, and then mix it, and then add the water. Um, that you know, like if you when you start making different you know recipes that you want to do, you know, again some. Uh, Honestly, there, it takes a little bit of experimentation. Um, we did also say that, you know, you could make oat milk separately and then make, you know, walnut milk, milk separately and then put them together. Or, you know, I mean, Chef AJ put everything together and it worked too. So, you know, in that case, that that's great. Now, um, you know, like what I've done here is I, I processed the walnuts first and I'm gonna add some dates now to, to sweeten it. Now, had I added that at the beginning when I first put the walnuts in, um, the dates would have just, you know, stuck to the nuts and, um, you know, stuck to the walnuts and made it a little bit harder to, to like really process, you know, so it would just become kind of this like big ball um, big ball of energy, you know, then, then that's not as great. So, um, so what I've just done is I processed the walnuts first and then I just added, you know, you can add two, two to three, uh, dates would be max. Okay. And it depends on the level of sweetness that you want. But again, you know, since we're talking about caloric density and caloric, you know, you don't want to go more than three, uh, dates uh, in this with this recipe. So I'm going to press mix. Uh, hit mix. And 
And so you see that then by adding the dates after um, I had already processed the walnuts, it makes it a lot easier, um, you know, as, as it's mixing again, as opposed to, again, if I had done that at the beginning, it would have just created like kind of a sticky ball. cups of walnuts. I'm going to turn that off so you guys can hear me. Um, one of the things was that uh, because I had only used about one and a half cup of all, uh, walnuts and it, you know, was sitting kind of low on the, you know, in the processor, when I added the water, um, it, you know, probably half of that went through the filter already, right? So, you know, but now that it, it's come out, it, it has emulsified, it's mixed together. But what you'll find is that, that in that first cup, like right now, let, let's say I'm like, oh, I want to try this, you know, new walnut milk that I just made. And then I, you know, just turn on the spigot and I drink it guess what? It's going to be watery. All right. So if you, you know, then say, oh, you know, the, the natural milk just made, you know, watery walnut milk. Well, give it a little, you know, give it a chance to first, you know, uh, maybe dispense it all into a container and then pour it into a cup or, you know, allow yourself a little bit, you know, let more of it come out. Um, but don't just drink that first like sip of it because it will be watery as, as you saw because that's what was at the bottom layer of the of the liquid right right sharon says but you can't just use a half a cup of nuts right you need to have at least a cup to do something yeah you know um i was gonna say yeah the the half cup would be is that what we found is that it it, it will fold under the the blades and so then, then what, what it's going to do is it's just going to be spinning air. All right. Um, it will hit it in the beginning. And so, so, you know, like for walnuts, I mean, since we were saying that, you know, it will process in about a minute, minute and a half, um, it could, you know, it could work where you just do the walnuts first, you know, half a cup or even three quarters of a cup um, and then throw it in, let it process and then add the oats and then make your um, walnut oat milk. Great. Thanks. So, so yeah, so I, 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 I don't want to um, mislead on that part just because I haven't personally experimented that way um, or, or tested it that way. Um, so, you know, we could um, test, do some tests and then, and then get back to you, you know, get back to you on how, how that works. Okay. So that's on the walnut milk. What I wanted to do though was show, again, I'm going to come back to that um, leaky almond butter that came through the filter, okay? Because this was part of sort of the FAQ kind of um, section, all right? Um, so so some, some, some questions that we've gotten before. So if you see again that because it came through the filter, all right, there's um, obviously some butter that's already stuck on the filter. But what's gonna happen too is that when I add the water, because it's not in that inner bowl and um, you know, the, the wiper arms are not going to be able to essentially mix it. Uh, you're going to have floating butter uh, in, in your outer container because it, it's not going to have that opportunity to mix. So I'm going to show you, um, actually, I'm, I'm going to need some water real quick. Uh, so, you know, so I'll show you guys, um, you know, what happens with that is that, you know, because if you kind of see when I lift it, okay, the, the butter is now on that outer container. Um, and so because the wiper arm is not going to be able to wipe it, it's going to, you know, essentially mix it. It's going to have a problem with the mixing. All right. So I'm going to add some water here, show you guys what happens. So 
you'll see that when I added the water, this time, like, because the almond butter is literally just like stuck on the filters, it's not going, you know, it's not really letting the water come through, right? So I'm going to press my mix. And so you'll see again, this, this is now where the water's like barely coming through the filters. So it barely comes through the filters. And then I'm going to show you as an example, then you can kind of see, um, I'm sure you can see it. Well, there's like floating nut butter <laughs> because it didn't have a chance to mix. Okay. So again, like if you start to have, you know, whether it was, you know, you felt it was watery or, you know, you had like all this butter sort of floating because it didn't mix together. This is why. Okay. Okay. I hope that so far this has been uh, educational on, on that part, you know, just some of the things that we've seen and, and based on the, um, you know, questions that we've gotten. What I wanted to do now is switch over to our, um, our butter smoothie bowl. Okay. Uh, the one without the filter, okay? It, it is the same same thing. It's actually the parts inside, it's got the same blade, the same wiper arms, okay? So um, let's say you had to wash all of them together, which by the way, you can, um, it is dishwasher safe, all right? Um, what you would wanna do is um, the, the blade and the spigot, let's say you would wanna put that on the top uh, rack, but the, um, you know, the bowls, the butter, you know, the processing bowl, the butter smoothie bowl, you would want to uh, flip that over just like a regular cup, put it in your bottom rack. Okay. And it's dishwasher safe. It's totally fine. Or you can hand wash. Um, one uh, kind of um, uh, tip is that if you want, you know, if you were making, say, um, a sticky butter uh, in here, after you've taken it out, you want to clean it. All you have to do is add a little bit of uh, dish soap, okay, into, you know, into the, into the bowl, and then add a little bit of water, okay, uh, no more than about, you know, a, a cup of water, and then just throw it back onto the machine, let it mix for uh, about a minute, and then, and then it'll actually clean off the sides of it, and it'll make it way easier uh, for the dishwasher or for you to hand wash. Okay. Oh, that's good. I, that's a great tip. I didn't know that because I, I always see you know, nut butter, it, it stays like that. You know, when you make oat milk or oat oat milk, what is left in the bottom? Because remember, Elizabeth, I think that was her complaint is that she, I guess she felt that there should be nothing like left on the, yeah. on the machine. Let, let me address that part. Okay. So when it comes to oat milk, um, you know, grains, let's say with rice, uh, with oats, all right. Um, those in that case, you are soaking it, all right, and you you know you have to soak, and then you uh, take out the water uh, first because you know you don't want that sliminess, right? Um, don't you know? I, I wouldn't recommend soaking it in the bowl and then just releasing the water. You should you know do it in a separate bowl, clean that off, let it at least um, soak for thirty minutes to you know an hour max. Um, and then, and then, you know, take out the water and then put in the oats. You will have um, some oats, you know, the oat left, oat left over, or, um, you know, uh, in the case of even rice um, when, with, with grains, because remember the grains don't have uh, very much oils at all, right? Um, and so when, you know, when we say the butter process, right, um, oats don't, you know, it's not necessarily going to become an oat butter right? Um, it didn't really grind down to that sorry level. Yes, it really, you know, it, we, we, we grinded it down, but, um, you know, it will have, um, you know, you'll have some pulp left over because um, that, you know, that, that, that's the oats. It didn't, it, it never got down to such a fine, fine level um, like you would with nuts or seeds that become a nut butter, if that makes sense.
Great, and I just got a question from Linda. If you're using frozen nuts, do you defrost them first? Uh, I would recommend uh, defrosting them first because um, uh, otherwise it will take you much, much longer to process. What we found was like, let's say if I just took um, the almonds out of the refrigerator or the nuts or whatever, this, the ingredients out of the refrigerator, um, it takes a little bit more time to get it down to that, um, you know, the, the temperature um, in, in order for it to grind down. Uh, to, uh, you know, I keep, I keep saying cellular level, right? So it, it needs to get down to that um, or get up to that temperature. Um, so it, it never goes over, uh, you know, so a question is that, yes, it will heat up a little bit. There's not, it's not a natural heat. I mean, I'm sorry, the, the machine doesn't heat it. It's uh, the natural friction um, from the, the, the machine that will cause some heat. Um, but, you know, we have a lot, you know, we had a lot of raw foodists um, that had, you know, seen, seen us and talked to us and such. And they said that the threshold is at about 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, which um, we we never really cross that threshold unless you, you know unless you're running this for like you know an hour straight then you probably would get you know the temperature to go up a lot more because it's just continuously causing friction and heat otherwise um, uh, it's not it's, you, you wouldn't get up to a really high temperature. Okay. Uh, Clarence says I've had a lot of almonds left over in the bottom too for making almond milk. But you're saying that's not almonds, that's the skin. Could you ever run more water in to try to get more out? You could. And then again, um, just like as I had demoed before, you need to make sure that you, you, you completed the butter process. If it is too, if it is chunky, if it is looking like this, like, a, like if it's too chunky, looking like a big, you know, uh, energy ball, like that, and then you put in the water to make it, you will have um, some pulp left over because it didn't get the opportunity to, um, you know, become that really, you know, a, a fine, uh, um, you know, it, it hasn't become fine. And so, you know, a, a good, a good uh, sort, you know, sort of um, the probably the arm just fell. But the, you know, the best would be is that if you got it down more to a, you know, a, a smoother, creamy, um, creamy texture, or at least seeing the waves. So again, you know, you want to at least see waves like this, and then add in the water, then, then you would just have um, skin left over. Okay. Um, and so, so yeah, remember that the, the filters are actually filtering out the skin, but you don't, you know, you shouldn't have any actual um, nut, you know, leftover nut, um, which is which is where you, you, the nutrition is at. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, the strawberry uh, creamy strawberry hummus. Okay. I, so there's a question, can you use the pulp for anything else? But that, that's the thing about this machine, there is no pulp, that's why I like it. The other machines, not to disrespect them in any way, leave a ton of pulp where all the fiber and nutrients are. Yes, yes. So um, again, you, you know, when you're using nuts and seeds um, and making plant-based milks or, you know, or like making nut butters um, or seed butters, seed milks, nut milks, uh, and it works with pretty much any seed. Um, the exception being like, uh, you know, chia seed will get very coagulated. Um, so it is kind of, you know, it'll be really sticky. Um, you can do flax milk. Um, and so, you know, again, the flax though, you do need to, um, you, you, uh, the flax is, is, is a seed that you do want to uh, first, um, yeah, soak to get the, you know, to get the coagulation out or the sliminess out. Um, but yeah, um, otherwise, you know, you, you should not have um, pulp left over. What you are having, you know, what's left over is skin, okay? Um, and, and, and that's, you know, what you would have, and you shouldn't have a bunch of pulp left over. Um, yeah, so, so um, that's why we don't have any like, you know, recipes and things like that as to, you know, what you should be using 
uh, pulp with, you know, like baking cookies or drying it out and, and, and or throwing it out and such. I mean, you really shouldn't have um, anything left over. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to show here our um, butter smoothie bowl. Um, this again was the separate attach, it's a separate attachment. Um, you know, this was because, again, we found that a lot of people um, had only wanted to make, um, you know, dips and butters and spreads and, and such, and then not let it go through the filter. Um, and so, you know, we basically just did a bowl without the filter, okay? Um, so for the creamy um, strawberry hummus, um, there, uh, Chef AJ will be sharing a link to the recipe as well. Um, but what I've used here is I've got about, um, okay, so one cup of uh, chickpeas or organic uh, garbanzo chickpeas uh, that have um, that have no salt in it, okay? That's about a cup. And then um, I'm going to add about a half a cup of almond butter, uh, any other um, nut butter or seed butter will work as well. And then I'm going to do one and a half cups of strawberries. Uh, and then I've got uh, about three medjool dates, um, remember pitted. Okay, take out the pit. And then uh, I've got about two tablespoons of lemon juice. Okay. So we get a lot of questions about if you can use this basically as a food processor. And, you know, essentially what I'm making, it's, it's, it's like, you know, you're making a, it's, it's using it as a processor. So I'm going to um, do this for about three minutes. So I'm going to stop real quick here is that, um, you know, we have some questions where it said, um, is it normal for, in, in, you know, ingredients to flip over the top of the, um, you know, or like sit on top of the, the wiper arms? Well, sometimes because they do pop up and then they will sit on the top of, of, of the wiper arms. So what I just do is I, I stop it real quick and then just shove, shove off the ingredients. Um, sometimes as it's spinning, um, you know, it will, will, it will just fall off. But in this case, um, I just went ahead and stopped it. Okay. So with the hummus, um, I don't want it to run for too long, otherwise it will get a little drippy. But you know, as you can see, this is this is going to be the hummus. Oh my God, that looks delicious. Just pour this out. This is the same way I do it with like smoothies, etc. A nice, just sort of, you know, most hummuses that we taste generally are, are savory. So this was just kind of like a fun way to uh, do a, a, a sweet uh, sort of dessert-like hummus. Um, and, you know, you've got your protein from the garbanzo, from the beans. All natural. We didn't, you know, we didn't add any uh, sugars, um, just the dates are helping to sweeten it. And then obviously the strawberries. Okay. So question from Mandy. So you would use the filterless bowl for hummus and dips and the bowl with the filter for milks and nut butters. Wait, sorry. <laughs> Say that again. 
you would use the filterless bowl for hummus and nut butters, right? And and for hummus and dips and the bowl with the filter for mix and nut butters, you can use that other bowl for everything except for milk. Right. Right. The only thing is you have to have the filter to do the milk, but you could use the smoothie bowl for everything else. Right. Soups, dips, spreads, smoothies, sauces, dressings, hummus, pesto, um, any type of mixing, using it as a process, you know, using as a processing, um, banana uh, ice cream. Yeah. Banana and ice cream. Um, and, and, and yeah, so, um, uh, you know, the, the one with the filter, the bowl with the filter, you definitely want to use that when you're making, uh, you know, your milks, your veggie broths, your, um, ginger your, shots, your juice your shots, your juices. Yeah. Anything that you, you want to be able to use to filter out again, um, you can use the same bowl for uh, your, your, you know, your butters, okay? And then just scrape it out, all right? Because that is that process before you get your milks. But um, it's just that, you know, if you're gonna be making a lot of nut butters, um, seed butters and such, you know, this just having this extra attachment makes it a lot easier. What we have found was that um, a lot of people just bought the machine, right? And then, and then they're like, oh, I, you know, I, I, I didn't realize I would want the, the, you know, the smoothie attachment, right, or the butter smoothie bowl. And so, you know, the, the way we had it bundled was that it was already, you know, discounted almost half off. And then when you have, you know, when you add the, um, the discount that we've got, um, you know, the, the, the promo that we've got going, um, you're practically getting the attachment for free. Yeah, yeah. So. Alicia says, I'm definitely buying this machine. Do you make a glass container to preclude staining issues? We, uh, we, may, we have a glass container to, for, to, for you to dispense like the milks and such out, but we don't have a glass um, bowl attachment. Uh, I've been trying to uh, get, um, you know, we've been trying to work on that with our engineers. Uh, what we found was with the at least with the with the inner bowl with the filter, um, you know the glass will crack, um, so that wasn't going to work. Um, but I was trying to get them to work on uh, at least doing that with the um, the nut butter smoothie bowl. The problem again is that you know most glass is usually hand blown glass, right? Um, and so, uh, uh, but because it needs to be, you know, if, if you look at the sort of the top of the the bowl here. Um, and where it kind, you know, it, it it needs to have a very um, consistent um, uh, sort of shape to be able to sit on the, you know, sit on the machine correctly. Otherwise, you know, if you've got like, you know, where where if the if the glass is slightly off, it can it it would have a, a problem with um, you know moving on the arms and such. It's, again, it's not like a blender where you just stick a, a top on it and then it's it's just blending from the bottom. This has got a lot more, you know, mechanics to it. Okay, so that's the hummus. So I hope I showed you uh, another application with that. And then, So the next one that I wanted to do was to show you guys a, um, a homemade uh, vegan Nutella, okay? What I'm gonna be doing here is, let's go ahead and move these ingredients over so you can see it in the screen. Okay. Um, so we've got hazelnuts and um, sometimes I will use almonds as well, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys uh, when I use the hazelnuts. The hazelnuts here, it's about two cups. Uh, you can roast them beforehand if you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and process the uh, nuts first.
So um, again, I don't want to make you guys wait while we're waiting for the entire time. So I wanted to show you again, like when I add the nuts, what happens and how quickly it becomes sort of this. Now in this case, it's like a hazelnut flower. Okay. Um, I'm going to kind of go back to the one that I previously already started processing. That's already in that energy ball phase. Do they have to, if I'm putting my link in, do they have to put a code in? Or just you follow the link and it will give them the discount automatically till the 31st? Yeah, I, I'm giving them the, the link to, to, to your to purchase a nut or milk, but do they need a code to get the 21% off? Is there something they have to put in? Yes, the code is new year. Ah, I haven't been posting that. Thank you. <laughs> Important. So I've referenced to energy ball a few times um, and I got, I had processed this down to um, be able to show you what a energy ball looks like. So if you see this, essentially this, that's kind of getting tossed around, that's what I call the energy ball. So um, as it was processing, it became, you know, went from flour, like a, you know, nut flour, and then, uh, you know, it spins, 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 becomes this big energy ball, all right, tosses, tosses, tosses around. And when its cellular level finally has um, broken, you know, and, and activated, it's now, it then releases its oil and it just kind of does this flat thing and then becomes the butter. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've actually talked to some like food phys physicists or, um, you know, and, and they explained um, the, the process really cool, but um, I've just used I've just used the word splat. So sorry, it was, I know it was a little hard to hear. So what I was saying was that it goes from like a nut flower, it becomes this like, and then it becomes this energy ball. And then after the energy ball keeps going, then it, it essentially just does this splat thing. And then the, the oils just kind of like release and then it, it becomes, um, and then it becomes the butter. Okay. Um, so, um, Have you ever tried making it with almond flour? Like, could you just do that or would that not work? You probably could. Yeah. I, I haven't tried it personally, but um, I'm sure you could. I mean, you know, I've done, I've used like sliced almonds. I've used already, you know, crushed almonds. You know, you don't, I mean, you know, when we do, de you know, a lot of times when we demo the machine, we will use like, you know, nice, pretty whole, you know, nuts just to show like, again, the strength of the machine and how quickly it will break it down. But, you know, yes, you could definitely use, um, you know, uh, much, much more broken down, like, you know, crushed almonds and such. Almond flour, I, I, I think you can. I just don't know, again, with like, you know, how long it had already been uh, processed and sitting there where maybe like some of the natural oils have, uh, you know, or the more, you know, if the, if the oils have already kind of been sucked out and such, so it might not be able to create um, the butter as well, but I, 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 I would say so because essentially the process is the same. If that makes sense. Thank you. you know, the thing about the dishwasher that concerns me is, you know, the bottom of the smoothie bowls, it's like this metal screw almost. And I always worry that dishwashers are too hot and will make it not turn eventually. Cause I know like you can't put your, they say not to put your Vitamix or your Blendtec blender in the dishwasher. No, I, 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 I put it in every day. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, like, cause I, I use this um, particular, uh, the butter smoothie bowl I, I use every day to make my smoothies. And then, um, you know, and, and whatever else. And then I always, I put it on the bottom rack uh, of the dishwasher every, you know, every day I use it and I've not, I've had no issues with, um, with the, you know, the, with the screws and, and the, the mechanics of the, the bowl. Okay. Um, all right. So let me get back to, so the homemade Nutella again. So I had the hazelnuts and then I'm going to do uh, about a third cup of, um, maple syrup here. Um, and when it comes to sweetener, you know, uh, you can also use date syrup or just, you know, a few dates, um, if you'd like, um, you know, I'm, I'm using, um, some organic, um, maple syrup here. 
And then uh, I'm gonna use about a quarter cup of uh, cacao powder. Um, and then about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Uh, our recipe, I do add a little bit of, uh, I, I use about a tablespoon of coconut oil. Um, you can uh, sans coconut oil, that's fine too, um, because there is some, uh, you know, obviously natural oils that are coming from the nut butter already. Um, and then, you know, um, some of our, some of our recipes does call for, you know, maybe a pinch of salt or like a quarter teaspoon of salt, which, you know, um, you, you don't know, you don't have to use. Okay. So I'm going to press mix. The longer you run it, the creamier, the smoother uh, it will be. probably go longer than two minutes. So um, again, we can let it keep going. And I have a little bit of steam as you know, like as you open it because there's some heat. Um, and so again, the longer I run it, the creamier it gets, okay? Um, so, sorry, I just used my same spoon here. Uh, do you find that raw nuts get, get creamier than roasted nuts or vice versa? Vice versa. Uh, roasted nuts will uh, get creamier faster because it has already been, you know, high heat has already been applied to it. Um, the difference with, with roasted nuts is that, of course, it tastes better, but when you've already roasted the nuts, um, you know, you're you're also, you know, taking away some of the uh, nutrients from it because it's been, you know, uh, roasted at high heat. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that would be the vegan Nutella. And then, you know, I mean, I, I would, I would want to run this longer just so that it was creamier and smoother. Um, so that, you know, you would have like that kind of N Nutella, you know, very creamy consistency. Um, I'm just going to take this out. And then, so then this would be your, you know, the, the homemade vegan Nutella. That's really cool. What, what do you serve it with? Like uh, maybe fruit? Yeah. Um, I usually would uh, put it on some uh, apples. Um, you could put a little bit of banana again, you know, um, I know that you've got different, uh, you know, uh, different kind of diet plans as well. So you do want to watch your caloric, um, you know, content, you know, you don't want to be slapping up a lot of, you know, homemade Nutella on, on an entire like banana. And then now you've, you know, consumed, 
um, way too many calories and such, but, you know, it's a great, you know, great dessert. And, and it's, you know, compared to what you would buy in, in, in the actual, you know, jar. I mean, that's got so much hydrogenated oils and just like uh, other stuff right in it. Um, very not, uh, you know, sort of healthy for you and not good for you. Um, as opposed to, you know, making it yourself, you know, exactly the clean ingredients that you've just put into it. Um, you know, uh, one of the things was, um, can you see if we could get juju? Um, have you ever made anything really weird like bean milk? Yeah. Um, you know, so as, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm Asian, I'm, I'm Chinese, uh, Chinese American. And, um, you know, we drink a lot of, um, uh, like red bean uh, milk, um, you know, so it's also called azuki. So I've done like uh, azuki, we've done like mung bean, which is like a green bean. Um, and, and so, so yeah, I've done different. Sorry, things. I didn't mean to call it weird, but I, I've never heard of, I've, I've, I've actually had a bean dessert, an Asian bean dessert that was almost like a snow cone, but I didn't know yeah. that you actually could make bean milk. Yeah. I was kind so, of kidding. Exactly. You know, the, the same beans that you had on that snow cone, um, is also, um, you know, you can use it to make a, 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 like a red bean milk and it's really good. Um, and you could do sesame milk, sesame seed milk. You could do hemp milk. Um, I mean, pretty much every nut and seed you could think of, uh, you know, we could do Brazil nut, macadamia nut. I brought Juju out here. She's my, our new nine week old, uh, chocolate lab puppy. Um, why didn't you name her Nutella? <laughs> so we named her Juju because, um, her daddy loves uh, jujitsu, so it's juju, and she's a she looks like a little bear, so juju bear. But um, I have her on a, um, a a most well, it's a vegetarian, mostly plant based diet, um, and I make peanut butter from with the machine. Um, again, just peanuts uh, that are unsalted. Uh, with, you know, using the machines just a few minutes, but it's way better than, you know, buying it in the store that's got a lot of hydrogenated oils and stuff. So, um, so yeah, she gets those kind of treats. Yeah, you save the, really, when you buy a machine like this, it's not just that it tastes better and you save money, but you, you don't have all the packaging. Have you ever made watermelon seed milk? Yes, uh, we did uh, watermelon, you know, I've, I've done um, watermelon seed milk and we did a watermelon seed butter. Um, now I did not actually take the watermelon seeds and then take them out each. I mean, there, there, there was actually was a brand of, um, uh, it was like a watermelon seed company where they already had de-shelled, uh, watermelon seeds. And then I just threw it in the machine. Otherwise that would have taken forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or I think like, you know, when you make like a butternut squash there, or kabocha squash, there's seeds inside, I'm, I'm throwing them away. Maybe I should make milk with it sunflower seeds, you know, um, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, all of the, you could do sunflower seed milk, you could do, um, yeah, the, the kabocha seed. Um, I haven't tasted that before. I, I would assume it might be a little bit, but pumpkin seed, um, because, you know, pumpkin seeds work really well in here as well. Um, so the kabocha, since that's pumpkin, I would assume that, that it's probably going to taste very similar. Well, I can't wait to try. Thank you so much for really taking the time to really explain the things that the, the people that bought the machine had questions from. And if you guys didn't have your questions answered, they have great customer service. There's a number on the website, there's an email, and I promise you they're going to help you because I wouldn't stand by a, a company that I didn't think was great. And I love this machine and I hope to be making more videos. I think I've done 13 so far and I hope to make more, but I really do use it. And like, I just, I love, cause I'm so lazy. I love that it just spins for me, you know? I don't have to open the top. That's my favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. And guys, if you're going to get it, get it before Sunday at midnight, because otherwise you're going to kick yourself because you could have saved a hundred bucks. So you know you want it. So you may as well just get it. There may not be another sale until who knows uh, Thanksgiving. We'll, we'll tell them later about our little thing we we cooked up. Right. We'll we'll save that for another time. But we yeah. we actually have a. We, yeah. we, we're, we're in cahoots to do something really fun with this machine that you guys are going to love. So thanks so much, Carolyn. Thanks for creating such a wonderful product. And thanks all of you guys for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Come back at 2 p.m. tomorrow for another bonus show, this time with the Campbells. Thanks again, Carolyn. Take care. Bye, Juju. Okay, bye-bye.